So it looks like Justin Trudeau has made a minor cabinet shuffle following the departure of Navdeep Baines, who previously served as the Innovation Minister. Now, a lot of people are going to talk about what this shuffle means and does it mean that an election is imminent, but I want to focus a bit more about cabinet shuffles and building a cabinet in general, and what are some of the challenges specifically that Justin Trudeau has boxed himself into with some of his policy platforms and some of the way that he's been talking about building his government. Now, the first challenge that I want to bring up is the sort of regional challenge, and that affects generally every government, and that's where you don't want to have too many MPs from one region, one province in cabinet or high profile in government because you really want to promote your government as a national government. So you don't want to have too many MPs from Ontario or from Quebec, from the Atlantic provinces, from out west, etc. But you also don't want to have not enough. So, for example, in Quebec, you know, you might have a limited number of seats. And so you do want to have that Quebec representation, but you don't want to have too much so that it seems biased or maybe lopsided towards one particular province or region, not to necessarily pick on Quebec. Now, this is further complicated by the fact that in Ontario, for example, the Liberals have a very high number of seats in the city of Toronto. And so as a percentage of your caucus, so that all of the MPs that are in your party, as a percentage of the caucus, the Toronto area MPs make up a huge bunch. And so you're going to have to put maybe a couple of them in some ministerial positions or parliamentary secretary positions. So that's kind of like an assistant to the minister in the house. But you're going to have to put some of these people in caucus. And that may or may not upset some of the other regional uh, interests or sort of regional representation that you have because you simply have a lot of people in one part of the country and maybe not enough in another part of the country. The other issue is that the caucus is kind of like a team, but they're not really like a baseball team or, or some kind of sports team. You know, on, on a sports team, you have people that play different positions. So you might have a you know, forward, a defenseman, a goalie, you know, baseball, you, you have a shortstop, but you, you may not want to put them on first base, etc. These people play specific positions, maybe train for these posi positions. They have specific skills for those positions. Maybe they, you know, just think a particular way and it's better for that position. But with caucus, so with MPs, First of all, you've only got who you have elected. So forget the, you know, 338 candidates that you put forward, but you've only got who you've elected or gotten elected. Second, you have to figure out where, you know, in addition to the geographic representation, what skills do these people have? Where, where are we going to slot them in? What can this person do? What can that person do? What's their background? You know, maybe this person has maybe a medical background or a legal background, a business background. So you're going to try and find some portfolio that matches that particular person. This person might have all the skills and background and they simply are not a very good manager. Maybe they're not good in front of the cameras and so you don't necessarily want a high profile person as, as, you know, as much as they may be uh, qualified or, or you know, fit that position, but they might make you look really bad and say something embarrassing and so you don't necessarily want them in a very visible portfolio or if you do, you're going to very, very much limit the amount of camera time that they get. So those are two kind of things. But the specific box that Justin Trudeau has put himself into is his goal to have a gender parodied, uh, cock, uh, gender parodied cabinet. So an equal number or give or take between men and women. Now that poses a problem because you may only have a certain number of men or a certain number of women in your party. And again, when you combine the representation by geographic region, when you combine the skills and the particular skill sets of these people, that may box you in further because you might be looking for, you know, a certain number of women, a certain number of men, a certain number of this group or that group, but you don't necessarily have the people with the skills that you want to put in. And so then it's, it becomes a question for you, you know, what do you do? Do you stick to that that goal of putting in a gender, gender balanced cabinet? Do you maybe, you know, have a, like a 60-40 split? Do you maybe talk about that? Do you just kind of ignore it? You know, I think that it's maybe a mistake to ignore some of these things, especially since I think a lot of people would like to see more people involved in politics. And if maybe there are not as many of a particular group of people that you would like to see involved, that's definitely something that we should maybe talk about. But the question really is for people building cabinets and for the prime minister's office, what are they going to do about these things given the sort of incentives, constraints, and maybe handicaps that they do have when thinking about these particular things? Now, this cabinet shuffle is, again, not so big. And so when you are making such a shuffle before a possible election, it really is an opportunity to change face on some of these very important files. And the files that are being changed, these are innovation, again, has to do with uh, some issues with China and some foreign stuff, investment into this country, purchasing of large firms. Uh, you're going to have Global Affairs, which is a foreign affairs department. So that's where Mark Garneau is going. Uh, that's, you know, again, a very huge file, a lot of stuff to go on there. Um, you have Transport, that's Omar Al-Gabra. 
that stuff is probably taking new importance now, especially with COVID, where uh, we want to keep our uh, infrastructure and our supply chains going strong. So these are big files. They may do well for the liberals. And uh, again, they, you know, they've been polling at near majority territory for uh, a little while. And it's really up to the conservatives. What are they going to make of this? Are they going to be able to take advantage of this? Is there anything for them to even take advantage of? Uh, you know, maybe they'll shuffle their uh, shadow cabinet, which is these sort of critics. You might hear about the critics in the news. So they might shuffle those people as well. But it's a very big opportunity for the opposition parties to maybe uh, make their voice heard if they haven't already. And uh, it's an interesting one for the government to try and rebuild their cabinet and get ready for a potential election on the horizon. So as always, a lot of interesting stuff to think about. But for True North, I am Sam Ashkenazi. Thank you so, so much for watching this video. Please don't forget to hit the subscribe button and the notification bell so you can stay up to date with all the latest and greatest videos from True North. So once again, I'm Sam Ashkenazi and thank you so much for watching.